with me today, we have District Governor Craig Burnett, um, Membership Chair Kathy Christensen, and Technology Chair Don Griffing. Um, and here we have our, our meeting online, right? Zoom has become a necessity for communicating during this time. And uh, I hope we're all getting more com comfortable with the tool, but just a few quick reminders. Um, we are muted, but we do um, encourage you to use the chat box or raise your hand if you'd like to comment. Uh, we'll have some open discussion time as we get to the end of the presentation as well. Please turn your cameras on if you can, if you have the bandwidth to do it. It's really nice to see each other. And if you happen to be audio only, it would be wonderful if you could let us know you're here so that we are sure to send you the materials after. Everyone on the call will receive a recording uh, and the PowerPoint slides and some of the reference materials that we refer to through the presentation. Um, obviously, please be, be present and involved in the session um, and be respectful and kind. So our session tonight is Keeping Rotarians Connected, and it's really emerged as a theme of our district training series. We know meetings and membership are what keep us connected and what enable us to do the good work that we do. So the focus of tonight's session is the critical hybrid meeting format. Kathy is going to remind us of the why of Rotary meetings and share an update on RI guidance regarding club meetings. And then Don will dig into the nuts and bolts of how to conduct a hybrid meeting. Um, as I mentioned, we'll have time to share ideas and discuss next steps at the end, and you'll receive all of the materials. So before we dig right in though, I do invite District Governor Craig to say a few words. Thank you, Lisa, I really appreciate it. And I would say the things that I share with all Rotarians at any time, which is thank you. This is our currency of, of what we have to offer our Rotarians. And you've given of your time tonight to help your clubs today, tomorrow, and into the future. This is a bizarre and strange time. And our most important job one right now is keeping our Rotarians engaged and involved not only for what we do as Rotary Clubs, but for those Rotarians themselves. We don't wanna lose sight of these people who are parts of our extended family. They are indeed a part of us and those who are not engaged could be at risk, could be in concern. We need to take care of them. And then we also need to re-engage ourselves as best we possibly can to do what Rotary does. So the team at the district level has put together a series on membership engagement. This is a piece of the puzzle. But remember this, Rotary happens in the Rotary clubs. It happens with the boots on the ground with you folks who day to day go through and walk the Rotary walk and talk the Rotary talk. So we're here to offer you some insights and ideas and the district team absolute applause. They have worked very, very hard on putting this series together. There is more to come. Please take it, use it within your club. Take care of your Rotarians, take care of your club, take care of the humanitarian service that you do as much as you possibly can. If you have questions or needs and support from the district, ask us. We will bring you whatever we can and just ask. If we don't have an answer for you, we'll try to find you an answer. We'll try to find you a resource, but we are here to support you. So please go forward, do more Rotary, support Rotarians, be a gift to the world, and be people of action. Lisa, back to you. Thanks, Craig. Greatly appreciate your words. And now we are ready for Kathy. So uh, thanks, Lisa, so much. And I'm going to just pretty much uh, uh, emphasize, I think, to a great extent, a lot of what Craig has said. Um, I just want to talk first, kind of get to the, you know, really basic, basic. So why are people Rotarians? You know, why, why do we choose Rotary? And um, I keep meaning to look up what it is you do when you, when you have a word and then you uh, attach a, a definition or whatever to each letter. But I, I guess I have to have Don advance uh, advance us, right? Okay. Uh, service above self, R, you know, in the R in Rotary is service above self. And so many Rotarians, as we've surveyed Rotarians, why do they choose Rotary? Service is a huge issue. Uh, the O, 
you know, is just involvement in community, both locally and internationally. Uh, T is for, you know, teamwork and volunteering to make a difference. A is um, uh, that Rotary does really appreciate the contribution that all Rotarians make. R is for fellowship, respect, fellowship, and fun. And Y is just that, you know, you're getting to share your skills and talents. And, and kind of the underlying theme of all of that, to my mind, is the human connection. So service, huge, huge, huge um, reason that people become Rotarians, but fellowship, networking, connection with others is uh, got to be a close second or uh, neck and neck. And um, it's important to remember that because we're in this time where we cannot necessarily connect in the same ways that we always could connect. Um, and if Don would advance, yeah. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about what RI nationally has uh, their their um, uh, perspective on uh, what clubs should do in the COVID nineteen era, and then I will talk just a little bit about um, kind of the state of things right now in terms of men membership, uh, where they were even before COVID, and kind of where they are. Um, going forward. So the RI board did meet in April and um, the bottom line is that the board said uh, health and safety of Rotarians is the most important thing and that no Rotarian needs to feel like they have to attend a meeting if they're uh, uncomfortable because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So it is really strongly encouraged that we all figure out ways to uh, connect without necessarily having to be in person. And we need to comply with all health and safety rules. So um, some suggestions with regard to member engagement that kind of are uh, connected to that. Um, just make sure that you are consistent in your messaging to your members. As we uh, know, just from remote, remote working, you know, some, one of the key um, uh, takeaways from the studies that have been done on what makes successful teams in remote work, communication is just critical. And you, you almost over communication is more important than, you know, if you think, just one, just the weekly meeting isn't always enough. So you may need to send um, a weekly update, some kind of email, uh, something like that to your members, but you wanna make sure that you and your leadership team of your club are all on the same page. If you decide to hold in-person meetings, we really encourage that you figure out a way to also allow for a virtual meeting. And that is the key component of this um, discussion tonight or the first this this uh, evening is about like the first basic steps how do you set it up technically and um, physically to get that to happen and then we're going to follow it up in the coming weeks on some of the finer um, nuances production value issues of meetings but it's important that when you do that you want those people virtual and in-person people to feel equally as important, equally as valued. So um, we're all learning. Nobody's got it down perfectly, but that's the kind of ultimate goal we're working towards. And um, we just are asking everybody to be creative and think about ways that we can stay engaged. And if um, any of you have, feel like you've really done a great job or you've got some good ideas, even if you haven't been able to implement them yet, please share them. We are, uh, you know, really looking to gather them and then be able to share them with all the clubs in the district. Uh, the final piece I just want to leave you with is um, the, the issue of attraction and engagement. We talk about that a lot with regard to membership. It's a huge issue. Uh, I would put to you that we do not really have an attraction issue with so in other words, we don't have a real problem attracting new Rotarians. We do have a problem with engagement. In uh, the 2018 to 2019 year, which is the most recent year that I have statistics for, we uh, 
attracted 158,000 new Rotarians. Unfortunately, we lost 164,500. That's nationally. We see that reflected in our district as well. Now the pandemic and this current situation has certainly um, made that situation a little worse. Uh, for our district, we had a 5% decline year over year because our new rotary year starts July 1. Uh, so last year, the, this year, the district's membership declined 5%. So, so this is a huge issue, an important issue. I would put to you though, uh, while those numbers can be considered depressing, I guess, not great news, this is a moment that we have an opportunity to take advantage of technology, take advantage of new ways of doing things and, and to increase members rather than, uh, or at a minimum, stop the slide. Because uh, whether you are a Zoom lover or not, it certainly has the ability to allow people to participate and, and be a part of our clubs in a way that we have not really ever had before. So uh, without further ado, I will let Don share the specifics of how we actually accomplish that. Thank you, Kathy. Um, and uh, I want to do something kind of fun tonight. So if you can open up your chat window, and if you can hear me, please type the number one into the chat and just Let's see if we can get a bunch of ones just streaming through. Hey, there they go. Um, also, I want to reiterate what Lisa said, that the slides are going to be available after the session. So I'm, I'm going to be throwing a lot of information at you. It's going to be a fire hose. It feels like a fire hose at times. Um, but rest assured, uh, we will. Uh, we, we do get you, have you covered that way. Um, so I, coming into the COVID, I want to talk about it from the standpoint of my perspective as a leader in Rotary. Uh, February, I was in um, the Caribbean on a cruise. And, you know, COVID was, was round and out there, but, you know, we weren't overly, you know, we, we thought it was going to be, be pretty safe. And then uh, beginning of the first weekend in March, I was down in uh, Chicago with many of you at Pets and got to see Holger. And then uh, middle of March happened and safe at home. And we're just all of a sudden hit with all of these questions. How do we, how do we meet, how do, we? and many of us um, did, go digital. We went online um, and started trying to figure out, figure out our way through here. But, you know, the, you know, what, you know, and I was one of those that early on, I thought, okay, this is only going to be a month or two. Well, a month or two is, is, is gone on much longer. So now we're, we're fat, we're kind of faced with the question of, what do our members want? How do they, how do they want to meet? And so this is the first area that just real quick in, your, in the chat window, what do you think your members want out of a meeting? What do they want, you know, what do they want out of the Rotary Club? Unfortunately, I can't see it. So I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> hopefully Lisa's seeing a bunch of them. Fellowship, camaraderie, good content, engagement, action, networking. Okay. To be connected. So, and yeah, those are, those are a lot of very good things. And one of the um, things that my, uh, my club, the Rotary Club of Oshkosh did is we started forming a, a task force to figure out how we were going to meet, start doing hybrid meetings. Um, and 
I borrowed uh, information from zones 26 and 27. And one of the things that they suggested doing is actually surveying the members. And uh, I created a real simple uh, Google Forms uh, and asked them some real simple questions. And we got some, back some very uh, good feedback. As you can see, 34% uh, of my club is very unlikely to attend an in-person meeting. So, you know, that, that's, a, that's a third of the club that we need to figure out how we are going to engage uh, until the end of the pandemic. The other thing is not everybody is, can, is not going to be staying away from the standpoint of health issues. There are employers that are saying you can't attend in-person meetings or it's strongly recommended that you don't. So all of this leads to if our clubs are going to survive to the end of the pandemic, it's no longer about going digital, it's about being digital. So uh, as we go forward, you know, one of, we've got lots of challenges and this is the next space that I wanna have everybody quickly type in, what are the challenges of being digital for Rotary Club? And Lisa, if you can just catch a few. Fellowship is the thread. Older members struggle, lack of technology, people not using technology, digital illiteracy, older members discomfort with tech. Okay, yeah. Um, well, difficult to do service projects and fundraisers. Yep, and uh, some of the things that we got out of, out of our survey is one, it just leaves me cold. Um, another is distractions. You know, people aren't used to working out of homes and having the kids and pets all over the place. Um, and then from, from a broadcasting perspective, we have broadcast TV or cable TV. So there's a certain expectation of what we see coming at us through our screens. So tonight, I'm gonna just focus in on the technical challenges of things. And it breaks down into th three main areas. One is the internet, the next one is video, and the last one is sound. So moving on into the uh, internet challenges, the um, first one is bandwidth. And I, the, the analogy that I like to use is the fire department does not show up at a fire and start using a garden hose to put out the fire. They use big three inch hoses because they need that amount of water. Well, video, conferencing takes a lot of bandwidth. And if a member only has a five megabyte connection at home, that's going to impede how well they see and hear what's going on. All, if your um, uh, host place that, uh, that you meet at has, doesn't ha has a slower speed, that's also going to impact how fast and how well the online viewers can see things uh, and hear things. Um, the next, another one, another consideration is, is the connection wired or wireless? A wired connection is going to give you superior performance over wireless. And one of the reasons why is the location of the access point. If, if, if you're in a big hotel, uh, hotel ballroom and the access point is by the doors and the podium and the computer is up on the opposite side of the doors, that's a long distance. And uh, you know, when I was growing up, I used to love waiting until the wee hours of the night so that I could start listening to radio stations in New Orleans and Texas and and other places because of the uh, less in interference. Uh, the other thing is just the number 
of simultaneous connections. If everybody in the, in the meeting space connects to the Wi-Fi hotspot, well, there's all of that interference. And so things, packets are gonna get dropped. People are gonna, it's gonna be very jerky. And so, you know, some of the things that you can do to try and mitigate that is turning off the video feed because that is a very uh, data intensive uh, process. Um, the other uh, hidden challenge in here is who owns the laptop? Is it a member's laptop or is it the club's laptop? If it's the club laptop, when was the last time that uh, any of the security updates have been applied? Uh, you know, what, are, what are its performance issues? So we kind of do need, need to be a little bit of cognizant about that. Um, video challenges. Um, it, there's that in-room experience. We do want to make, make, help make our members feel like they are together, regardless of them being at home or in the meeting, in the meeting space. Uh, and so how do we do that? What is the definition of that in-room experience? And honestly, it's not necessarily fun to be uh, on the Zoom meeting looking at a crowd of people eating lunch. So need to be mindful of that. Um, also screen sharing. Um, you know, how, how, does, how does that go? Um, and good case in point here, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and restart because I've got an audio clip in here later on and I forgot to share my computer sound. So as much as I would like to have that um, computer sound going, you know, I need to be able, I need to share that, need to share that sound. So, um, so uh, then also, where's the lo presenter located? If you're meeting in a hybrid situation, is the speaker in the meeting room or they meeting via Zoom? You've got two different characteristics that you want to be mindful of, again, for that in-room experience. If the speaker is coming in through Zoom, you're, it's best to have the Zoom in speaker mode so that they fill up most of the screen versus all the little bitty squares. But if they're in the, if the presenter is in the meeting space, then you want to try and make sure that the uh, online members get to see the speaker and that it's not just boring slides uh, like you're getting right now with this. Um, something that, that I like uh, that I borrowed from another zone pair was the term operator. An operator is the person that is running the computer, Zoom on that computer. So the more things that are going on in the room, the more the, the operator has to pay attention to it. Uh, so somebody from, that pops in and they're not muted and they got the lawnmower going by, the operator needs to quickly be able to, to mute them. Um, if they're doing screen sharing, uh, all of that, you know, need to be mindful of, of that operator load. And I kind of touched upon this earlier, speaker versus uh, gallery view. Um, yeah, it, it's nice at home to see all these little bitty squares, yet, in, in the meeting space, the little bitty squares, it's, it's difficult to see who distinguish faces at the uh, backside of the room. So moving on, sound challenges. The onboard microphone on the, on the laptop is barely sufficient for one-on-one -on -one Zoom conversations. It is not gonna be good 
for yeah, a, a, a meeting room space, wh whether it be the basement of a church, the back room of a restaurant, or the, or the ballroom of, of, the hot of a hotel. So you need to be, need to have something better than the onboard microphone. Uh, also background noise, you know, you know, we're, we're very, very used to that now since we're all getting used to doing um, Zoom and having lawnmowers or car backfires or whatever, uh, kids running through the room. Um, th those are, th um, the another kind of background noise would be clanking of plates or dishes or chairs across the floor. Uh, I've talked a little bit about the audio clips and presentations. Uh, Want to make sure that people can actually hear them. Echo. Uh, we've had that happen a couple of times tonight where there's been a little bit of an echo. So that's goes tie, also ties back to the operator load challenges. Um, another challenge, especially right the way things stand right now, is masks. Masks muffle sounds. And so you, it, you need to make sure that the microphone is, it, is gonna be able to hear the muffled voice through a microphone. And one, the last sound challenge that I want to talk about is the sound system that's in your meeting space. Uh, if you're in a church basement, do they have a sound system or are you, you just use plugging uh, uh, external speakers into the laptop? Need to be, need to be mindful of that, that room sound system and where that sound system is in relationship to the mic maybe because again you don't want to have that feedback you know you know that's one of the problems that i have sometimes when i'm presenting in a space with a microphone i'll accidentally walk too close to the overhead mic and get that little ring uh that gets amplified now with um no pun intended uh with people uh listening with headsets uh remotely so um, I wanna move on to some, some hardware. The first piece of hardware that I'm gonna talk about is the webcam. And the first thing I do is I'm throwing up, throwing up a bunch of specifications. And the reason is that webcams are still a very hot commodity. Uh, I, I bought, purchased a webcam for my club last week and by the time I got the ap approval from everybody uh, on the board saying, yep, that's good, that model was gone and I had to do, was, do something different. We actually got a better deal, I think, for it. But um, so the first suggested model is the Logitech C920. That's actually the uh, an upgrade version of the webcam that I'm using right now for for this meeting. Um, it uh, has the 1080p. You'll also notice that there's little wings on the side. It will record stereo sound. So depending on your meeting space, this could be sufficient. Um, then there's uh, the Microsoft LifeCam Studio. Again, you can see the, the tripod mount uh, easily there. And the last one is the Logitech uh, C922. Again, it's just the upgraded version. And Logitech has specifically designed this mo version to be a conference room webcam. It's it's a low it's it's a, it's the low end of their conference room webcams. You can spend thousands of dollars on on webcams. I'm going more of, more on the budget side of things. Don. Yes. We, we have a, a note here. Shooter says he's losing part of the slide and it's not visible. I'm seeing it fine on my end, so I just wanted to do a check. Is everyone seeing the slides right now? Feel free to, to 
Yep, Jim says yes. Sridhar, is it working for you now? Okay, just want to make sure everyone is seeing it. Thank you, Don. Okay. And you do have a question from Betty, what do they cost? So I know you're, you're headed there yeah, next. I, I am heading, I'm heading there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. Peter says people need to switch side by side mode. Oh. That might be the display issue. Right. Um, with, with, um, with, with setting up Zoom um, in the settings uh, for screen sharing uh, for the application, you, you, there is a side-by-side -side mode. So uh, the next one is a uh, piece of tech is uh, the microphone again. You want to be looking for a conference microphone. Um, and I throw on up again some sa some sampling range, some ranges. The sampling is just how high and how low of the tone is it, go is it going to pick up. Um, and then the the response is just how fast is it is it is it recording. Um, so, so suggested models is the MXL AC404 USB. You can see by, by its shape that it will pick up, uh, a, it will actually pick up a 270 degree range. Um, and um, then there's the Samsung UB1. This is actually a nice uh, model from the standpoint of with the circular design, it's full 360. So you could put it in the middle of the meeting space and everybody will, will be heard. And then the third one that I'm uh, gonna, that I kind of recommend is the 10 hour conference. Um, and one of the nice things that I like about this is on the top of it, there is the mute button. So again, thinking about the operator load to mute and unmute, the operator only has to touch a button versus trying to find the mute and unmute within the uh, Zoom application. So on to the question of what do these cost? Well, because webcams are still a hot item, um, when I priced them this, this past weekend, a 920, was from 750, uh, yeah, from 75, $75 to 150 and, and so on. Um, so, and I was looking at BH Photo out of New York, Amazon, Walmart, Target, you know, pretty much any of the, the online vendors. Um, and then for, for the microphones, um, they, they're pretty much, they're pretty, they, Conference microphones have been around for a long time. They're pretty stable items. And so their price ranges are not as, as wide. Um, so when, like I said, I went out and purchased uh, equipment for my club. And originally I priced out the 920, Logitech 920 and the, micro and the MXL microphone. Uh, by the time it came around, I got the 922 with a little tripod, so it sits, it's still, the, the tripod is only about uh, a three inch uh, leg. So it's not that large, but it will still sit on a table. And that was for $160. And I went with the MXL um, AC404 uh, and I got that for $75. I, I opted for that over the 10 hour, just because of looking at the reviews, the and I, 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 I've heard the MXL in a large in a large space and it picks up very well, and the reviews seem to be more favorable for the MXL over the the 10 hour, so I I went for for quality, so the total list price of what I spent for the club uh, was two hundred and thirty five dollars. So this is, the, all of this equipment is talking about connecting to a laptop. 
Now we all carry a device that can also be used for uh, broadcasting within our meetings. And those are smartphones. So, Don, yes? if, I, if I may, before you move on to smartphones, there are two questions in the chat. Um, Scott's asking about, aren't the microphones built into the webcam? And Jim's asking how big of a room and how many attendees do we typically have at a meeting with this equipment to use? Okay, um, yes. Uh, so we, go, going back to the, um, to the microphones on the webcam, um, we, when we did a pilot of our pilot run of the hybrid meeting for the Rotary Club of Oshkosh, we, we used my webcam. Um, and the sound came completely off of that. It was sufficient for picking up general stuff when people needed to do announcements or things, they needed to make sure they got closer to, to the camera. So it, it does work, in, in, but it's also was in a full ballroom within the hotel. Uh, so in a, in a smaller space, uh, 30 by 30, you could probably, or maybe a little bit larger, you could probably get by with just the stereo microphones on the uh, Logitech models. Um, and um, the other question, the, um, the- How big of the room and how many how big, how big it, right. Um, the, I, I've uh, been a, I've att I att attended a, a hybrid meeting uh, with another organization and they were in a meeting space that was um, about 30 by 50. And the, the, the uh, MXL was, is at the front of the room and somebody in the back of the room could speak through a mask and we could pick up what they were saying. Uh, so that, that's, I, that, that's about as specific as I can give you uh, with that based upon, um, upon my experience. So. Um, Thank you. And Scott's question is a great segue into your next piece. Okay. So um, smartphone, um, tripod, you, the, you know, a sp our smartphones, they have cameras, they have my, uh, microphones, um, and the first one, first device that I'm showing is the shoulder pod S1. What's nice about this is it, it's a handheld device, so you can actually carry it around the room. And uh, Monday session, somebody more articulated uh, was better articulating what I was thinking about this. This is uh, if somebody wants to share something, you can actually walk up closer up to them, have them in the view, and they'd be talking um, uh, on the, uh, and talking to the camera or to the phone and everybody when the room's obviously gonna be able to hear them, but everybody that's uh, coming in online would see and hear them. Um, what's the other thing that's nice about this device is there is the tripod screw at the bottom of it. So you can mount it on a tripod, again, thinking about operator load. So you can plant it. And if you're in a small space, this, this may be a, 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 a viable option. The, the next, the other one that I wanna talk a little bit about is the Mifoto Sidekick 360. Uh, this will take a smartphone and it will hold it either in landscape or portrait mode. So there's a little, uh, you, can, my, you can see the little silver dot in the middle that, that's the pivot point. And down in the bottom is where it will attach to a standard tripod. Uh, so this, this would be good for a fixed, for a fixed location. Uh, it's not as mobile. Um, and there are um, 
microphones that you can purchase for uh, smartphones that you can attach. Uh, I do not have any expertise with them. If you're interested in that, I would suggest find Googling people that are doing podcasting um, and because uh, they've got a lot of experience with those kinds of kinds of devices. So basic setup. Most of us have our meetings pre-COVID set up this way. We have a, a host laptop with an audio out going to some sort of amplification device and a VGA or HDMI going to a projector. We might add the internet because our speaker wants to show a YouTube video. So what we're doing is adding at minimum a webcam. And just like uh, was asked in the question, you know, one of those Logitech webcams in a small space may be sufficient for, for your needs. However, if that's not, that's where you attach a remote microphone. And both of these are USB devices. They're essentially plug play and uh, just a quick check in the Zoom app to make sure that they are using the actual device. Uh, so that, that's a good starting point. We can go down the road and do something more advanced. And this is, you know, right now with my club, we're doing the basic setup. Down, however, I can see us down the road where we're gonna have two operators in the room. One that's running what's labeled on this diagram, the AV laptop feed that's connected to the power, the project, the hotel's PA system and the projector. And it's got this uh, slideshow on it. And the, that operator will be taking care of sharing the screen for, for the presenter. And then we can have a smartphone or another laptop a webcam pair that's looking at around the room or focused in on the uh, the speaker because one of the nice things is when I, you know when I attend meetings uh, or when I attended meetings I should say I look I would glance up at the the slides but at most of my time my I was focused in on the speaker so they going to this much more advanced setup uh, when we have speakers in the space is is a nice way to give that in-room experience. So I know that I've thrown a lot at you and this is you know, my background is software development, agile software development, uh, agile methodologies is part, is part of my philosophy and in there is a cycle of plan, do, check, act. So plan out what you wanna do, do it, check, figure out what, you, what needs to happen and then plan, plan again. So uh, we, we did a pilot of our hybrid. So we planned what we were gonna do, we did that. And then we were, when we were done, we asked ourselves three questions. What went well, what could be improved, and what will we commit to improve the next time? And so with that, we're always striving to continually improve because you know, Zoom, you know, Zoom was good to get us digital, but it's not just staying there is not going to keep us digital. So we want to keep pushing and expanding so that we keep our members and guests engaged. So here's a bunch of uh, resources that uh, we used. Um, you can see that uh, I, we borrowed from a couple of different rotary zones. Uh, that club survey I've, that we used for the Oshkosh Club uh, there's a template out there and some instructions as far as how you could 
copy that and use that for yourself and then also the the slides um so i hope that i've given you uh some ideas to help your clubs to become digital because as leaders we want our members and guests i want to be in the room where it happens the room where it happens and back to you lisa thank you appreciate it and yes to answer pete's question all of these materials will be emailed to you tomorrow um, so where do we go from here a big thanks to don for going over the, the nuts and bolts of the tech for us um, as you know we're, we're eager to help all of your clubs launch into the hybrid meeting mode so we're here to help it support you um, if, if that's one-on-one -on -one or consult or what have you um, also we'd like you to communicate with your ags and give them updates um, they're providing that forward to us and to Kathy and her membership committee. She has eight people on her team who are ready, willing, and able to help you with this process as well. They've been trained and, and can help us triage um, and utilize the, um, the membership committee. And I guess the last thing I want to put out there is we're interested in what other topics or ideas um, you would like to see us cover in future sessions. So um, we appreciate that feedback on a continuous basis. So I think at this point, um, we want to open it up to what questions you have or ideas you have, knowing that all of this will come to you tomorrow and um, that we're also looking to do some future sessions around membership and engagement. Question, is this information going to be in the US mail or on the internet when it gets transmitted to us tomorrow? Email, so you'll have it instantly tomorrow. Other questions? And Kathy, is there anything you wanted to add at this point? Um, no, I think it's just, you know, moving forward, I think it's done, ended, and as you just said, we are really looking now, this is the basis and we want everybody to get there and in the room, but we're really then gonna work on the nuance and how to make that experience um, better. So. Exactly. Uh, but, um, Anyone have any successes they want to share? Yeah, they I try can, anything? Yeah, we, uh, we here in McGuanago, um are doing hybrid meetings and started at the beginning of July. And then the good news for us is we have full access to a small restaurant and for our size club it works. And mm -hmm. the first three weeks of the month um, used a well, I was using a laptop, but right now I'm using a $250 Chromebook that happened to have in my house available, uh, a $32 webcam with integrated microphone, um, and have had anywhere from 12 to 15 people in person and anywhere from four, and today we had about nine connected in via uh, Zoom uh, online. Today we had our first speaker via Zoom, so that was a little scary, and the Wi-Fi actually flickered a little bit, made me nervous. Um, but using the restaurant's Wi-Fi with about 12 to 15 of us in person, we can probably comfortably have 18. And today we had eight to nine uh, online. Our club normally has 20 to 22 in a meeting. Um, um, I can see where if we had a larger room, you would not be able, with an integrated webcam on a somewhat inexpensive camera, you wouldn't be able to hear a person in the back of, in the back of a, a room uh, ask a question, but I make sure people come up to the front and, and present. I'm using a Bluetooth speaker to project the speaker's voice. We, we uh, connect the HDMI cable into a TV. Uh, I'm also recording our business meeting and the speaker, and I'm posting it unlisted on our YouTube uh, club page so people can view the speaker and our meeting um, afterwards. I send on the YouTube link. Uh, afterwards and have had some success, several views of, I don't know if they watched the whole thing, but those who weren't there. So we're, we're doing it right now um, and the technology is working. We're doing it definitely on the, on the cheap. We probably have you know, $50 uh, into the technology, but we're also in a restaurant that we can probably comfortably have 18 to 20 people and still be socially uh, distanced, uh, you know, eight, eight booths and six or seven tables. So, mm -hmm. Um, 
it, uh, you know, Ethernet really isn't uh, an option in the, in the restaurant. We're using their Wi-Fi and thankfully it works. The resolution is good, good feedback from people who are on the Zoom meeting. Um, so, you know, we went from in June, people asking, well, why would we need to keep Zoom when we go back in person to now it being integral to our ongoing meetings and keeping uh, people <laughs> engaged. And I'll, I'll just say, without taking sides on this, whatever, why it's a controversial issue, my concern is, is, is now that we, if we go to a mask mandate, we may have fewer people showing up to our meetings and more using Zoom, um, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, well, that might be. I just would emphasize again what I, what I tried to say in the beginning, which is, um, you know, not only are there gonna be some members who just aren't comfortable, and, and there was, you know, we do have a universal mask mandate now, but, um, <clears throat> You, it's an opportunity to attract, maybe attract some people that you might not otherwise have been able to attract. And uh, that to me is one of the silver linings potentially of this terrible thing. Uh, that means though, that I think you need, you know, there's gotta be some investment made. Um, our, my club just to share, you know, is Fond Lake Morning, we have 90 members. Uh, we actually did pretty well, you know, just via Zoom. I mean, we'd average probably 50-ish people on a Zoom meeting. We began, uh, this was our third this morning, in person, for hybrid. Um, so this was the third week we were doing that. I am personally not necessarily comfortable going back. So we've had about 18-ish, 18, 20 people in the room physically. And then 35-ish online. And we've gotten better each week, but there's still definitely, you know, the first week as a participant via Zoom, we, we always, I don't know about you, you know, you start your meeting at seven people eat, and then you start the business like 7-12. We, we all on Zoom had to sit there and watch these people eat in the room. You know, I mean, those are just the kind of things you just, nobody thought, you know, you just didn't think it through. So we're getting better, but it's still, there's some quality sound issues and, and things like that. And, and so we talked about in our finance committee, making an investment, you know, and actually where we used to have maybe a meal charge, we may now have a technology charge uh, that just allows us to purchase um, some of the equipment to make this, this experience as um, enjoyable as possible for all people. Mm -hmm. The technology investment is an important thing. And, you know, Jim had a Chromebook sitting around, but even with everything that Don reviewed tonight, um, for $500 or less, you can be putting on a great quality Zoom meeting. Yeah. So it's not, it's not huge dollars. Yeah. And, and I just want to go back and say, Jim, that I, I kind of went off there and was talking about good for you is what I want to say. I mean, I, I don't want to miss that at all. So good for you. That is awesome that you, you've you done that. So yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. And Shreeder has a really important reminder in the chat. We should be exploring service projects that afford us social distancing and still keep engagement level high. You're absolutely right. Because I think for a lot of folks, it was, well, this will be over soon. We just need to get to the end of it. And we really don't know when that end is coming. And, and if it does, I think this is, as Kathy said, you know, there's a silver lining here in what we can do differently. So let's get, get people involved and keep them involved with a project. And then it's something we can be talking about. Yeah. Um, we all feel better when we're serving, when we're making a difference, making that impact. So um, yeah. great, great Pete? point there. Pete? Yeah, I got a, I got a question. And I'm, uh... I'm asking this a little afraid to ask it, but our, our meeting place doesn't have any Wi-Fi. Has anybody got experience using a cell phone as a hotspot and doing a Zoom meeting or something with AV? Anybody it, around the group doing that? Otherwise, I'm sure Don can speak to that. And, and, oh, Barry, do you, have you been doing that? He's doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the a, a lot of it 
again, depends upon the self strength that you can get into the meeting space. Um, for, for as soon as I walk into my, uh, the hotel ballroom where we meet, I lose data access. So that, so I need to, need to pop on. Um, so, but if I'm, if uh, in other locations, you know, I will ha sometimes have better data access if, with my LTE than I will with, with Wi-Fi. So you know, a lot of it just depends on, uh, it, you know, how much, what's the concrete around there, you know, all, all, you know, you're back to radio interference. Right. So what I take from that is it's worth a try. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the, 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 worst, the worst thing that happened, and what, because one of the things that, that, that I would recommend is trying, going, trying it uh, with just a simple Zoom meeting with three or four people, somebody yeah. in the space and somebody out, just, just to, for proof of concept. Oh. Um, and then if, you've get, if the proof works, then, then go for it. There's also a suggestion in the chat that you can use speedtest.net to uh, yeah. check your phone. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so thank I you for that, Robert. I have said that we may just have to change up our thinking a little where before when we chose our meeting location, you know, the priority was maybe what the meal was or whether there was bacon or, you know, and now <laughs> it, it's maybe, you know, what, what's the technology situation? You know, how, how will that help us um, meet? At, and it's just a different emphasis because of the yeah. new situation. In our case, we have, a, we have our own building. So uh, mm. we, we may end up either having to uh, wheedle and cajole a Wi-Fi uh, uh, router out of the city or just pick a different location until this thing is over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and... I was in a space yesterday. Um, unfortunately, it, it's not open to the public right now because of, of 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 the facility there. But they've got microphones all around the room, and it was it was a ballroom si almost a ballroom sized space, and it was picking up everybody with masks beautifully. Um, so, yeah. It, it, to to Kathy's point, you know, technology is there that venues can put into place, and they might they may find that they you know that it's a business opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions or comments? I don't think we have anything. Looking around the room, no raised hands, no chat. Well, we really thank you for your time and attention today. Um, here's our contact information. You can reach out to any of us. This is the last slide of the slide deck that you will receive tomorrow. Um, you will also get a link to a survey. We're really interested in your feedback on what you thought of tonight's session. How can we make it better? And what ideas or needs do you have so that we develop training going forward that is usable to you to do the good work that you're doing? I think with that, I will ask Don, Kathy, anything to add? Otherwise, we'll close the session. I think we're I, good. Thank you for holding this meeting. You're, you're welcome. welcome. Thank, thank you thank all. You for, thank you for attending. Thank all you. All right, everyone. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. So, did Jim leave already? Okay, darn. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to ask if, um, because, it's, because one, it sounds like they, they went right away to having speakers in the in-person meeting, and right. I, wanted to, I wanted to get a little bit of the, their thought process around it, because we're doing the exact opposite. Opposite, right. Right. Yeah. What are you guys doing, Kathy? Well, we had in person. We've had um, two presentations that were in person. And uh, as a Zoom participant, it, it was okay, um, but there's some challenges that need to be 
you know, need to be addressed. I think our sound uh, audio is an issue. Um, uh, but I, I guess because they were scheduled prior to COVID, you know, and, and so that's, and they were okay with being in the room. Mm -hmm. So. Don, you and I had some conversations uh, along these lines. Did I, did, did I give you any good, any new information or anything? You, you're muted again, Don. <laughs> I'm mute. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yes, uh, and one thing I have found out with doing it by Zoom, you can get speakers all over the country. I had the Good point. gentleman from Shelterbox from California uh, present a program a couple weeks ago. And John Hanus from uh, the RI office, you know, working out of his home, however, was happy to talk about public image. So um, that has been, you know, uh, I guess a plus. Plus, um, we're going to try some in-person meetings coming August. Um, we're having a club picnic, certainly that will be in person. And then we're having our Interact Awards Banquet in a couple weeks. So we'll find out how that will be handled. So uh, you, you were lucky to going to be in, in the church basement? Yes. And uh, that has yet to, uh, we haven't had our first meeting there to see how that works. But we're lucky to have the pastor as a member of our club. So she says the, the basement is yours. So we'll be catering our food in every time that we have a, a meeting there. So but we know that the, she has said the Wi-Fi is very weak and it's mm -hmm. an old church so that so the walls are probably you know this thick yeah. with concrete mm -hmm. and yep. and so I, I don't quite know how we're going to do a hybrid yeah. but that's obviously something we need to look very seriously at. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, uh, and, I'll, and I'll follow up with Pete because something that I just thought of is with, with making the phone a Wi-Fi hotspot. If you put the phone like next to the window, yeah, mm -hmm. then there versus in the middle of the space, then you, you you've got you you still have a, a relay, but it's. Uh -huh. I don't think there's, there's hardly any windows in this church yeah. basement, so that's another issue. See, I, I'm just, my message really is prioritize technology and yeah. the ability to do this hybrid meeting over other considerations. I, to me, you know, it's more important than the food. It's more important than oh, yeah. I mean, free even, you know what I, I mean? It's it's an investment that I think is going to be essential for us to stay in business, kind of. I mean, I, on a, I don't want to be that doom and gloom, but I, I think it's that important. Right. So I, I'm not sure the, the basement under other circumstances might have been a fabulous choice, but uh, under these circumstances, um, I'm not sure it's a good choice, you know. If, if well, finding a spot will be a real challenge as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah 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 yeah. Well, we'll work on it. We're mm -hmm. Rotarians. We love challenges. We're yeah. We're, well, we're we're resilient. We're resilient. That's that's true. That is true. But I think it's really important, and and that's you know I think going to be the message we try to carry forward is. Um, I mean, I was joking about bacon, but a, a lot of choices we used to make aren't going to be the same choices mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. different selection criteria, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Anything well, else? Anyone else? I think we're good. Thank you. Thanks, Thank thanks you for all. attending it. I was so excited to see you two. Your, your, your name's on the list. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay.